Hi, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about what resources I used for step one. Step one is that exam where you're going to see resources and tire. Oh my God. It's such a cocktail of resources because it's the first one. It's a tough exam, you know, in quotes. Might be the hardest exam actually you might have encountered in your medical journey up to that point. It's something you've never done before. It has such a reputation that I think the reputation that goes ahead of it is even a, is even more than the exam. So it's normal to have a lot of, what should I use? What did you use? What should I use? What did I use? And that exam is one exam that you can make mistake of using a lot of resources. It's actually a bad thing. And I, I'm not going to say that I didn't fall in that um, category. But yeah, so I'm going to talk about the resources that I used and why I use them, you know, why I love them or, you know, what my thoughts about them were. And there are like a ton of resources. I didn't explore everything. So these are the ones that I think were like very key in my, in my preparation. So the first thing would be my USMLE Rx. Oh my God. If I could pick one resource for step one that I absolutely loved, it would be USMLE Rx because they had this it was, it's made by the creators of First Aid, right? So to me, it was just like someone is reading my First Aid to me because the videos we have, like they went accordingly, right? So your page one of First Aid, you have a video like that. And I just, I honestly love it. I know that not everyone, it wasn't very popular at the time. Maybe not everyone loved it, but I can swear by it because it was such an amazing resource. Loved it, loved it. Totally recommend. It's good for entry level. Like if this is your first time, you don't know where to begin, your bases are not good, you don't know how to cover first aid. I honestly loved. And it was just very easy to annotate because you could be going along with them. So if you know me and you've ever asked me for step one advice, best believe I've recommended Rx to you. And nope, I 100% no regrets using Rx. Second thing would be Bot and Beyond. I didn't use Bot and Beyond actively during my prep. I'm sure I used it when I was um, still reading alongside classes. You know what do I mean? You know, there, are, there, there was a time when I, I knew that I was going to do step one in the future, but I wasn't actively reading or preparing for step one. But Bot and Beyond had like amazing resources for, you know, GI, hematology, endocrine. So I love the way he structured his modules and it, I could, you know, relate, I could, use them alongside my classroom studying. So yes, I think that was the period where I used Bot and Beyond. But when it came to um, step prep, it was a bit hard for me to annotate it because, you know, it, I I had to you know watch video. He had his own PDFs as well. And then I was the first aid. And I was really scared about having like a lot of, you know, notes and all of that to read. So I was like, you know what, let's just go with Rx because Rx is more, you know, aligned first aid but what i'm beyond is an amazing resource lots of my friends use this and they actually like really love it but I, I knew that it was just not easy for me to manage and another reason why i loved rx was because rx had a q bank but some also has a q bank actually but rx had this q bank he had this flashcard feature that i really loved so for the topics that were hard for me to you know read first aid and keep in my head i could make flashcards and you know go through them I wasn't super consistent, but yeah, I love that that was a feature I could get. And then the Q Bank were my first exposure to USMLE material or USMLE style of questions. Of course, I didn't finish, but I think I went more than 50%. But then when I saw that time had come for me to run, <laughs> I had to just leave it and buy my reward. But being exposed to those questions at the beginning of my prep was like a very, very invaluable experience. And I'm sure that it helped my foundation very well. Now, another thing I used was Sketchy. Sketchy is a good resource. And all these resources are amazing. Honestly, they are amazing. They work for different people, might work for everyone, but they're actually like really amazing resources. Sketchy was good for me in the beginning because my microbiology was terrible. Oh my God. I finished second year. I didn't know micro. Like micro was just that cause that, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but that's for reasons best known to me and my group mates. My micro was horrible and Someone introduced me to Sketchy, so I you know I sat down, watched all their videos, bacteria, fungi, viruses, and I was like, okay, so this is actually not as hard as like, it's actually not hard to to get. Like this micro is not it's not the way I thought it was, and that's actually that's actually I think Sketchy taught me micro. Let's put it like that. Sketchy taught me micro, but when it came to using it 
to actively prepare for step. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not really a visual learner. I don't know, but those cartoons couldn't stick in my head. <laughs> I have a friend. I keep having him to today. Like once you ask him anything in the micro, he just says, wait. He will think, ah, there was a cut in that video. There was this. And he had such a photographic memory that he could picture, you know, sketchy and remember things. But no, it didn't really work for me. And I knew that I couldn't keep going back and watching sketchy over and over and over again. I didn't have that luxury of time. So yeah, sketchy was good for my foundation in micro. Sketchy helped me to know that micro is actually not hard. It's not that hard. And I think I also did um, microbiology made ridiculously easy. It was a textbook. I'm not really a textbook person, but I did it for some time. Those things like they're amazing. They helped me to they helped me, they taught me what I couldn't learn in class, right? But when it came to step itself, I think after learning all of that, you know, having those foundations in sketchy, in that micro uh, micro biology or clinical microbiology, I don't remember, but I think made really closely easy. When I had that foundation, I came now to Rx, you know, and then used first aid to like round up everything. And if I had questions about micro, I would always go back to um Rx or go back to my first aid. Right. And now, of course, how did I forget first aid? First aid, first aid, first aid, first aid, Bible of step one. Everybody sings it. First aid was like an invaluable resource. It was like um, someone summarized or jotted step one content and put it in a book. It's not a good book for um, if your bases are bad or not very strong. It's not going to teach you. It's only going to apply things. It's like a summary book. OK. So yeah, you might. That's why people use Rx, use B and B, use all these other video resources because it explains first aid. First aid might be hard for you to just carry it and read page one, read page two. Some people do it honestly, really kudos to them. But for me now, nah, I knew I had to have something that would explain, you know, first aid to me. So yes, first aid is like the <laughs> the foundation, and then all of these things are like feeding into it, taking it apart and amplifying it. The other resource that oh my god, I absolutely loved was Pathoma. Dr. Sata is like a genius, like, oh my god. And his voice. <sighs> when I saw his face and I heard his voice, I was, when I saw his face, I was expecting one, you know, strong voice, professor kind of voice, but no. Dr. Sata has this like very amazing voice. I enjoyed listening to him. He took pathology and made pathology so simple. Gosh, he broke pathology down till today. Oh my god. The, the, patho the, the histology path of it the pathophysiology part of it why this is this pathoma is such an amazing resource like if you don't use anything apart from your first aid and your you will please use pathoma pathoma is amazing like it's, it's a short book but it's such a well you know because another thing like why you cannot play with your pathology is because step one is about 40 percent pathology like pathology is like the bulk of step one content so you don't want to sleep on your pathology right so if you are struggling in pathology and you need someone that would you know explain this thing you're not cramming not telling why this is this you know that you can even use it to derive other concepts definitely try patho pathoma please don't sleep on pathoma guys okay and then there is this general consensus that before your exam the week before your exam or a few days before your exam you should do chapter one two three of pathoma i don't know if i did it but i'm sure i did pathoma in third year when i was having my pathology classes loved it helped me in my third year exams and then when i started actively preparing for step one again i know i went through pathoma again such an amazing resource guys i've spent so many minutes talking about it don't sleep on it then the next thing is kaplan biochem oh my god dr tuko ah oh, man that guy is so good like biochem that you think biochem is are there formulas in biochem <laughs> but biochem that you think is biochem hard no dr tuko would tell you that no we have to begin from the foundation you explain biochem so well oh my god like yes kaplan is bulky people don't have time for kaplan because it's very lengthy but guys if you don't use any other video of kaplan and you can do biochem with dr stoker please just try it you would love biochem you would love genetics you will understand these things and when i actually start preparing you're not going to have issues okay so i used kaplan biochem it was amazing guys amazing Trust me. And then the last, no, not the last, you would. You would is that resource that everybody, 99, maybe not 99, 90 something percent of everyone who writes step one uses you would. You would is an amazing resource. Like they've been in the market for long. They understand the exam. They are up to date. Their interface is amazing. Right? So it's like, I'm sure by now they might have entered 4,000 questions. Boys, I know that it's more than 3,600 questions when I was writing my step one. 
and they have questions on every subject, right? And these questions actually mimic the real exam. Honestly, at least in my in my experience, it really did. And it's an amazing resource because when you fill a question or get a question, you're gonna see in explanations why you fail with this, why the options, why these other options are not the answer. You're gonna now see an educational objective, like a very short um three four line summary of the question, and then they have these amazing pictures, videos, all of that. You watch like a whole textbook on his own, honestly. And you all this, you all this an amazing resource. I keep saying that they're amazing resources because they really are. Now I used Ambos as well. I think at the time Ambos was um Ambos was still getting popularity in the market and it was just like a recommendation. I enjoyed their library, really enjoyed Ambos library. Ambos library just makes life easy for you. You don't have to search Google, you just come. Type it in Ambos Library and everything from summary to definition, clinical features, diagnostics, everything. And you can also set your library. You can tell them that you're preparing for step one and then they give you step one relevant materials. And that's actually amazing. I rushed through um, their QBank during step one. So I didn't really like um, do a lot of it. But Ambos helps me to consolidate my um, UOL concept. And something else I loved about them is that for step one, they had this 45 day. Um, step one plan where all the questions of step one we are divided into 45 days so it helped me to do a like rapid review so to say of you know full 40 like i think two months or so before my exam i started doing the 45 day i think even three months because i had classes as well so i wasn't super consistent every day so that's what i used so i started using the 45 day plan i think i finished and yeah so yes i was, was one of my resources for step one and then the last but not the least would be youtube <laughs> youtube is like <laughs> that i don't know youtube has everything so this guy on youtube dirty usmle i watched dirty usmle the week before my exam days before my exam so the things that um we are very hard for me to keep in his head he had amazing mnemonics for them he just had ways of simplifying things ways of making this thing stick in your head. So I super, super, super recommend the TSMA to everyone. Oh my God. The TSMA was just, thank you for making those videos that you made. Really helped. These videos are just excellent, guys. You just have to, you have to watch them to know. Okay, so the TSMA just helped me to tie in everything because towards the end of my prep, I was already fatigued. I was tired. I couldn't really study as effectively. And I just wanted to get everything done. So just sitting back and watching those videos were amazing. Come to the end of today's video. If you've written step one before, tell me what resources that you used and which ones you loved. If you're already preparing, tell me which ones you are using currently and which ones you're enjoying. I would really love to hear from you guys. Okay, to the next video. Bye.